changes in spreadsheet graphics may come slowly, but they do come. And one of the more interesting developments in data visualization in spreadsheets, and especially in Google Sheets, is something called a sparkline. Now, this is a concept that derives from work by Edward Tufte, really father of modern data visualization. But the idea here is to create a very small graphic that fits in line with text. And in the case of a spreadsheet, it means it fits right in a cell. What I'm going to show you is how to make these in cell visualizations for several different kinds of data because the sparkline function in Google Sheets is pretty flexible. Now, this is a formula. So I type equals and then I start typing in sparkline. And you can see it says it's going to give me a miniature chart within a single cell. I just need to tell it what data. I, so I highlight this data. And then I close the parenthesis. And then there it is. I now have a timeline chart. It's really small. I'll make it bigger for right now. Let's scroll down a little. And so now I've got this little timeline chart that shows the variation in donations over time. It sets it so that the lowest value is at the bottom, the highest value is here at the top, and it just moves over one step at a time. It doesn't indicate months, it's just going from this cell to this cell to this cell. But here's the neat thing because it's a formula, I can do what I do with other formulas and I can drag it to apply to other columns. And so now I've got this little timeline for each one of them. This is really a marvelous thing when you've got a bunch of different data sources, you want to look at them really quickly. Also, because they're in each cell, you know, I can just make the cell bigger if I want to, and now the charts are bigger. Also, you have the option of changing some of the properties of each sparkline. So for instance, this one right here, it looks like it goes from really low to really high. But if you scroll through the data, you see that it actually goes from 12,000 to 20,000. And so it's a little misleading to have it start that low, we can change where it starts by fixing a parameter called y min. So I'm going to double click on this. I'm going to come right here. And I'm going to paste in a comma and then in curly brackets, because that's how you do arguments in Google Sheets for sparklines. I put in quotes, y min, that's the thing I want to change, comma, and then the value I want it to have. I enter. And now you can see it's bumped up so that it's a little over halfway up. That's a big improvement over what we had. You can change other things as well. You can change, for instance, the color and the line thickness, which I'll do with this one. This is our total, so it should appear a little bit differently. I'm going to put in there two arguments. One, I'm going to change the color. And this is a hex code. It's a way of specifying colors that's frequently used with computers. This is the dark red that I've been using in lots of other things. Then I put a semicolon because I'm going to include a second argument and that is line width and two means two pixels. And now I've got a total chart, which is a stands apart from the others, but also lets us see the change in time. And so this is a really handy way to look at data and the flexibility of being able to do it in a cell is a fabulous thing. Now I'm going to come over, I'm going to put this back down for a moment to 100%. I'm going to come over to this next column. This is called win loss. Now you may not be doing this in your data. This originally comes from sports about whether a team won a game or lost a game. And I'm putting in some zeros to indicate that they didn't play or there was a rain out or something like that. You can adapt this to other things like for instance, whether you got a new client or they lost a client, I don't know, whatever works well for you. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to put in another spark line. So I'm just going to do a spark line. And I'm going to select the data. Now, if I just do this by default, it'll draw the same kind of line graph that I have over in the others. And that might be helpful. But with win loss data, there's a special kind of sparkling. So I'm going to open up that one. And I'm going to insert this extra information, where I say chart type is win loss, all one word here. And when I do that, it gives me this little collection of bars on the top half and on the bottom half. Let me zoom in on those. I'll go back to 200. Scroll over a little bit, come down here. And so you can see that we start with two wins, we got a couple of rain outs and then a loss a win a few losses. And it's a way of seeing this pattern of a dichotomous variable over time, you can do things like you can put different colors for the tops and 
for the bottom, you can put a line through the middle. You can, there's a lot of options for coloring this, but this is the default win loss chart. Now, I want to come and finish with one other one. I'm going to back this down to maybe 150. And that is the social media follower data that I've used before. I did this with a repeat chart, which allowed me to draw just vertical bars using a formula all the way across. There is a way to do this with spark lines, but it takes a little bit of adaptation. So let me do this. I'll enter spark line. And then I'll tell it the thing I'm going to draw is this. I'm going to close the parenthesis. Now I'm going to get an error message. And the reason I'm going to get an error is because it says it, you need at least two data points and I only gave it one. But I'm doing a different kind of data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on this. And then right here, I'm going to insert that I'm doing a bar chart. So I put comma and then in curly brackets, chart type comma bar. And when I do that, it draws a bar that fills up the whole cell. That's actually kind of neat. And I can drag it down, but you'll see there's another problem here. It just automatically assumes that each bar should go to the maximum. So right now it's not telling us anything. What I have to do is I have to change the maximum on each of these so that it, each one of these bars has as its maximum the maximum value here in our count, which is this 50. So I'm going to double click on this one. I'm going to come right here and I'm going to insert another argument. And now what I'm putting is max is equal to the maximum of this range of data. And I have to use the dollar sign two and dollar sign seven so that it always stays row two to row seven as I drag the formula down. Now the first bar is not going to look any different. But as I drag it down, now you see that all the other ones adjust. And they show you what proportion they are of the maximum score of 50. And so spark lines are a really creative and new way of visualizing several different kinds of data, changes over time, wins and losses over time, even simple bar charts, but all done within cells, which allow you to rearrange them in a number of ways. They've got a lot of other options. You can explore some of those, but this is a really a fun development in data visualization in Google Sheets.